everyone and welcome back to the series of solving PEO technical questions and here we are solving the exam questions for electrical A5 which is the electronics course. Uh, here we have a PGT question but this PGT question would be different than the previous questions we did. The previous questions were basically DC bias questions only and we have to figure out if the transistors are basically in the saturation mode or in the active mode. However, in that question, it is stated that the, the transistor is acting as an amplifier with a gain of 100. Once the transistor is acting as an amplifier, it means it was work, it is working in the active mode. I don't need to check that. So this is the first thing. The second thing, in these type of questions, when the transistor is working on an amplifier, you have to do both. You have to do the DC analysis, and you have to do what we call it the AC analysis. To do the AC analysis, you have to build a model. And that model is basically extracted from the DC bias, as we will see in the coming slide. So before going through the question, let's have a little bit of a background. So in the DC analysis, as we know, we find IC, we find ID, and ID. Now, this is the model that will be used in the AC analysis. So there are two components. There is a resistance between the base and the emitter of the transistor. So this is your transistor, this is your base, this is your emitter, and this is your collector. So that model is basically representing that in the AC analysis only. And we have a GM B uh, pi. B pi is the voltage between the base and the emitter. Sometimes it's called VB. It's the same thing. Okay. So this is a dependent, it's a voltage dependent current source. So this current source, but it's value dependent on two things. GM and the voltage between the base and the emitter. GM itself is equal to the collector current that is calculated where in the DC analysis, divided by a constant voltage, which is 25 milli. R pi is equal to VT over ID or beta, which we know is to 200, divided by this G. So once we know R pi and GM, then we can do the AC, the AC analysis. Now, with this little background, let's go to the, to the question. So in this question here, we have a transistor. We are given different parameters like beta, BBE, and so on and so forth. It says design this amplifier to have an open circuit gain. So you want to have an open circuit gain means that your load resistance here is an infinity or an open circuit. And the gain has to be 100. And you are given the DC bias current, i.e. 2 milliamps. We want to find RE and RC so that we can achieve it. This is the first part. So this is coming from the DC analysis. We have to go back to the DC analysis. We need to find the other currents. We need to find the model from there. Before doing this, so this is basically, we start with the DC bias. Always, we start from the DC bias. Now, in the DC bias, we have here those capacitors. We know that ZC for the capacitor is 1 over omega C. But we know omega in DC is equal to 0. So DC, there is no frequency. So it means that your ZC equal to infinity or equal to an open circuit. So we will open circuit this capacitor and that capacitor in the DC bias. Plus... The second thing you do in the DC bias, you short circuit the supply because this is just, this is the AC supply. This is the AC input that, that its signal will be amplified at V out. But since I'm doing DC bias, then I don't need to have the AC signal here. I just need to do the, uh, with the plus five volt, minus five volt. These are the DC uh, voltages. Okay, so let me draw now the BGT with the existing DC structure, and this is grounded, okay? So we have here plus five volt. This is my IC, 
which I don't know. And I have RC here, which I don't know. RE, I don't know. But then we have here, IE is given to me as two milliamps. This is given to me. I have here IB and I have, this is equal to uh, RS given to us as 100 ohm. And this is minus five. That is the structure of my DC circuit. Okay, so now I will apply KBL here. Apply KBL. KBL. So you'll have 100 times IB plus the voltage between the base and the emitter, which is 0.7, which is given to us here as well, plus the 2 milliamps, 2 times 10 to minus 3 times your RE, it's our unknown, minus 5 equal to 0. So this is my first equation. We have two unknowns, but we know that your IB is nothing but your IE divided by 1 plus beta. So we have everything. Your IE is 2 times 10 to minus 3 divided by 1 plus 100. And this will give me a current equal to 19.8 microamp. So this is number two. Let me substitute two in one. So we will have 100 times 19.8 times 10 to minus 6 plus 0.7 plus 2 times 10 to minus 3RE equal to 5. So this is my uh, one equation prime. So now I have everything I need. I just need to have one unknown. So my RE will equal to 2.15 kilo ohm. So I'm done with this part. Now let me continue. Let me find IC, which is basically equal to beta IB equal to 100 times my IB, which is 19.8 microamps, and this will give me 1.98 milliamps. Now, once I know IC, I can find GM, which is basically equal to your IC divided by VT equal to 1.98 times 10 to minus 3 divided by 25 times 10 to minus 3, and this will give me point 0, 0792. So this is your GM. Finally, your R pi is equal to your beta divided by GM, which is 100 divided by 0 0.0792. And this will give me a resistance equal to 1 to 62.6 ohms. So that is my model. This is the R pi and this is the GM. Now I am ready to do the AC analysis. So let me build the model here. So we have here your GM pi, okay? And we'll have here my R, R pi. This is my transistor. Let's see how we we'll connect this transistor. Now, those capacitors in the DC analysis, they were modeled as an open circuit. Now they will be as a short circuit because you have high frequency here. So the high frequency, we have an omega. So this will become a short circuit and this becomes a short circuit as well. So this short circuit will short circuit RE. So RE will not exist. Now in AC analysis, we kill the DC supply, the opposite. In DC analysis, we kill the AC supply. Here we kill the DC supply. So this will be grounded. Okay? So this, your base, collector, emitter. So this will be now grounded. I will have here my RS, this resistance, which is equal to 100. And here is my DS. Now, we have here these two resistors, because this is grounded, RL. And RC is also grounded, because we kill the supply. Okay? So both RC and RL in parallel. However, we said that without RL, so we'll have only RC, which we don't know. RC is not given to us. And this is my V. Now, what I know in this circuit, I know now R pi. This is my V pi. 
okay? Now, I know that your V out over Vs, which is the gain, which is equal to 100. This is a given information for me. Now, what is my V output? My V out is this voltage, is the current that goes here times RC. Now, this is the current, it's Gm times V pi, but the current is going in that direction opposite of the polarity. So your V out equal to minus Gm V pi times R RC. Now, where, what is V pi? It is the voltage here. Okay. Now, this V pi basically can be calculated using a voltage division. Your V pi, the voltage here, V pi is equal to your Vs times R pi over R pi plus 100. Now, what is voltage division? In short, if I have a supply, Vs, and I have two resistors in series, R1 and R2, and I am interested to find this voltage. This is equal to Vs times R2, the resistance across which I'm interested to find the voltage, divide the summation of these two resistors in series. This is, we call it voltage division. You can apply KVL, you'll get the same answer. Okay, so this is my V pi. I will substitute V pi here. So your V out will equal to now minus Gm times Vs R pi over R pi plus 100, okay, times Rc. Okay, very good. Now, let me divide by Vs. So your V out over Vs equal to minus Gm Rc R pi over R pi plus 100. Take the absolute value, your V out over Vs will equal to Gm, we calculate that as 0 0.0792 times Rc, which we don't know, times R pi, which is 1262.6. We calculate that in the previous step. Divide by 1262. 0.6 plus 100. And this is equal to what? Equal to 100. This is your V. So I have everything here except RC. From this, you can find your RC is equal to 1362.6 ohm. That is the value of RC. And now we found RC and we found RE. Now, here it says, what is the equivalent output resistance we want to find the resistance when we don't have a supply okay when we don't, so we have to short circuit this and see what will be our output resistance let me uh, insert uh, a page here okay so let me insert the page okay let me insert the page here Okay, now let's see our model to find the resistance after you kill this. Okay, so basically you will have, this is short circuit. You will have your RS. You will have your R pi. Here is your V pi. And then you will have your GM V pi. And you will have your RC, and I want to find my output resistance. Looking from here, what is my output resistance? Now, because I don't have a supply here, your V pi will equal to zero. So there's no supply here. If V pi equal to zero, then this would be equal to zero. So the current source here is equal to zero. A current source equal to zero it means it's an open circuit. So let me redraw the model now. So this is RS. This is your R pi. This is short circuit. And then you will have an open circuit and you will have here RC. 
and this is your R out. Clearly, your R is equal to RC, which is equal to 1362.6 ohm. Very, very easy to, to deal with. Now, the last part, part C, it says for one millivolt peak to peak sine wave, the input one six uh, for an input one ki uh, kilohertz sketch accurately the waveforms at the collector. So you want to see what is the output here at the collector. Okay, so I want to see the output across this, across RC, and at the output voltage. Okay, remember we take account that now RL is equal to 1.25 kilo. RL is not anymore a short circuit, sorry, an open circuit, okay? So now my, we have a model and we want to find your V output, okay? So our model now will be, this is my VS, this is my RS, this is my R pi, this is my basic. This is very similar. GM V pi. Here is my V pi. This is still a short circuit because this is the AC and this is, this is short circuited. The supply is short circuited as well. But now the difference here we will have RC in parallel with RL. That is the only difference. This is your RL. Okay. And we want to find what will be your V. Output your out equal equal to what your V out. Okay, now your V out very straightforward is equal to the current times the parallel combination of these two resistors. It's equal to minus GM V pi times RC in parallel with RL. And your V pi, we know it, V pi equal to the same thing, equal to Vs times R pi over R pi plus Rs. So we have everything. Just substitute here, it's equal to minus Gm times v, uh, v pi, which is Vs R pi over R pi plus Rs, all of this is your V pi times Rc in parallel with Rl. Rc is given to us, Rl is given to us, so everything is given to us. Just substitute the value, we'll find this is approximately equal to minus 48 Vs. That is the relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage. If you want to draw this, if this is your input, your input, let's say, is equal to a peak to peak value equal to uh, one millivolt, peak to peak sine wave. So this is basically uh, 0.5. So one, so this is 0.5, and this is 0.5. So total is one. From here to here is one. The output will be basically negative of this. Okay, your output voltage will be the positive side will be negative. And the negative will be positive. Where the peak value, the peak to peak value, would, this would be like 24, and this is minus 20, 24. The peak, peak to peak to value would be 40, 48. So the gain here is 48. The gain has been reduced. Why reduced? Now, because we have an RL. The RL will, will uh, cause the gain to be actually actually uh, reduced from 100 to 48. So that's an overview question, a design question, but you can solve any AC analysis with the same approach. Do the DC bias, build the model, and do the AC analysis. And while doing this, you have to make sure that you know how to deal with the capacitor, the supply, and the batteries.